This video is a tutorial on MakeCode Arcade. Similarly to Scratch and Microbits, MakeCode Arcade is an online website that lets you create your own projects using code blocks and specifically your own arcade games. You can play the games using the simulator that's on the website or you can download the games onto actual game pads. So this one here is called the BrainPad Arcade where you can actually play your own games that you've made yourself. Using the project editor, you really can create so many different types of games and it really is a lot of fun. You can create games that are quite simple to more kind of elaborate games that have their own health, their own enemies, their own levels and maps that you need to go through. To start creating your own games, go to the makecodes.com website and if you scroll down, you'll see a tile here for arcade. Um, in our microbit tutorial, we showed you that there's an offline microbit uh, editor which lets you create your own microbit code if you don't have internet connectivity. But unfortunately, there is no such tool as of yet for Arcade, so you will need internet connectivity to use it. So just click on the Arcade tile here and it'll open up the Arcade website. So we'll just give it a minute to load up. Okay, so when it loads up, the first button you'll see is to create a new project. There's also, if we scroll down, different tutorials and games and uh, different kind of tips and, and tricks that, that are there that will show you different things about Microsoft Arcade. But let's dive straight into the project editor. So let's just give our project a name and it will open up the editor. So if you've used Scratch, the Scratch website, or if you've created code for Microbits, this layout of the project editor will be quite familiar. So as we see here on the left, we've got our little arcade simulator. So any code we create will run in here and we can interact with the buttons A, B, up, down, left and right and so on to play our game. These are all programmable using the blocks. In the left middle part here, we have our toolbox. So this is where all the code blocks are, all the instructions are, are, are all the blocks for creating instructions for your games. So you've got sprites, which is for like characters like the main hero character or the baddies that might be in the game. You have controller uh, blocks for programming the buttons and for controlling um, your characters moving around. You've game specific blocks for starting the game, resetting the game, uh, pu putting up a kind of splash screen like, you know, you're on to level two and so on. You can add in music, so there's music blocks. You can change the scenery, so the background. Um, you can set different tiles and different maps. You've got your information blocks, which are there for score, so to show your score, set the score, set the lives, you know, take away a life and so on. Then you have loops and logic, which are very similar to what they are in Scratch and in Microbit. So loops are for repeating instructions a certain amount of times or do it forever. And logic is your if then case statements or your if then else, or if you want to compare different things, you know, and or and so on. You can create variables. So, for instance, if you wanted to create um, a, a username or a high score or something like that and store it in a variable, then that's what you could use. You've got math um, blocks as well, so adding, subtracting and so on and getting random numbers. There's more advanced blocks as well in terms of functions, arrays, text, but we won't go into them just yet. And then the main kind of block area here that kind of has a a gray grid in the background is your area for dragging and dropping your blocks. So for creating your code and your instructions. So let's create something simple. As we can see, there's a default block that always is there at the start and that's called on start. So anything we put in here will run when your arcade computer, your console runs up for the first time, starts for the first time. So let's create a character, let's create a sprite. So we're gonna to go to the sprites toolbox and drag in set my sprite to, and that's gonna set it to, so this is creating a variable essentially called my sprite and it's setting it to a type of sprite. So you can actually click on the little gray box here and it'll open up the editor. So you can go into gallery if you want to choose just different characters in there or if you want to create your own, which I will do now. We'll create a little smiley face character. You can do that as well. Yeah, done. 
So there's my my sprite, my character, as we can see it in the middle there. Um, we can go into the control controller toolbox and we can program our character to move around with the buttons quite easily. So we're going to set um, the my sprite uh, variable, the character, to move with the buttons, which are these buttons here. So let's test it out. Up, left, down and right. When you see blocks with a kind of plus icon here on them, it means you can access more attributes of the block. So if I open this up, this is letting me set how, the velocity of how fast it moves on the X axis, le left and right, and the velocity of how fast it moves on the Y axis, up and down. So you can just leave them as default, or if you want it to move a little bit faster, if you want to go 200, and run our code, it just moves a little bit faster. So let's create a little map for our character to move around in. We're going to go into the scene toolbox and drag in set tile map to and put that in the on start. Clicking on the gray box again, we can open up the editor. So I'm just going to draw a very simple map. So I'm going to draw a box around the outside and just a few different kind of corridors where our character can move through. So I, when I click on done, the simulator should refresh and we can see our map in there. Now, what I'm going to actually do is create each one of these red blocks that I put in and kind of make it a tile so I can put a bit of design on it. So again, we're going to go into the scene toolbox and grab a set tile to block. So what this block does is we can choose a color. So I'm going to choose color red. And what it's going to do is anywhere it finds red in the map, it's already found some, um, and it's setting it to blank, you can design the tile. So let's just quickly design a kind of wooden block tile. And once this refreshes, you'll see that anywhere in the map where there's a red block, it replaces it with this tile that I've designed. So if I use the up arrows and so on, you can see I can move around the map, but I can actually move through the walls. So in this set tile block, it has a with wall off or on toggle. At the moment it's off. So if I change that to on, my simulator refreshes. Now when I go try and go through the walls, it prevents me from doing so. So that's a very easy way you can create your maps and make your characters move around in them. But the map we've made is quite small. It just covers the screen. You can actually create larger maps where you can kind of scroll through as, you, as your character moves along. So let's do that. So we're going to go back into our tile map and we can see down the bottom left here, it says 10 by eight. And that's kind of the size of this current map, the, the canvas as it were. Clicking this, goes through all the different options of the different sizes. So I'm going to choose one that is kind of long to the right. Um, so 32 by eight. I'm going to clear out some of my walls and then add on just to kind of give you an idea of what can be accomplished. So I let it refresh. Now I can go up and go through. You'll notice that when I go off the screen, the, the camera isn't following my character. So there is a block for that. I think it's in controller. No, maybe it's in scene. Yeah, camera follow sprite and you can choose what sprite to follow. So we're gonna put that in on start. So it's gonna follow my sprite. So now when I move, through the map, you can see the camera follows as well. Now, obviously my character is just floating in the air. You can program gravity so that the character is constantly falling down, being pulled down by gravity. So it kind of forces your character to walk along the bottom until you program maybe the A button to make it jump up temporarily. And again, gravity will pull it back down. For the meantime, what we'll do is we'll just add in another tile 
into here maybe and this tile is uh, maybe lava or something like that that if you run into it it will give you some damage so we'll add in some lives so let's do that first of all we're going to go into the info toolbox and we're going to say set life to three we'll just drop that in at the top and once it refreshes you'll actually see that it automatically puts in uh, three hearts there to signify the amount of lives you have so let's go into scene and do another tile um, we will do this one blue and we will just make it like some fire maybe so red orange and yellow and now we'll just fill those in so it kind of looks a little bit like fire so my map should stay the same because so far I haven't included any blue blocks in my tile map. But once I go in now and start adding them in, you will see how this works. So now we can see anywhere I've added in the little blue blocks, it will show my fire tile. Now at the moment, there's no consequence for going into the fire but we can program that so that you lose a life. So in the scene toolbox down the bottom, there is some blocks for collisions. And one here, it says on sprite of kind player hits wall and you can choose the color for the wall. And then whatever we put in here will happen each time the player hits the, this type of wall. So we're gonna choose blue. So we want a consequence of going into the fire. And that consequence is you will lose a life so change life by one but we can also maybe play a sound and do some animation so a couple more things just to change for this to work to lose a life when you touch on the fire we'll need to make this tile a wall so i'm going to put that on and also when you touch it we want the character to move somewhere else. So we'll lose a life, but move somewhere else because if you leave it still touching, it'll just keep on losing lives. So we're going to sprites and we'll set the position of the sprite. And we'll do this at the very start. So we'll set the position and we can select where. So let's go back into the middle like so. So let's test this out. So we should lose life little animation so we've only two lives and we go back to the middle and the last piece of code we're going to add in this tutorial is to create some projectiles that we can fire out from our character so we're going to program the a button that once you press this it'll fire something so we'll go to the controller toolbox and get on a button pressed and drop that in and now we're going to go to the sprites toolbox and scroll down to projectiles and there's a block here, set projectile. So it's creating a variable called projectile to type of projectile, which we can draw. And that's going to come out from my sprite. So your sprite character. And then you can set the X velocity and the Y velocity. So let's drag this in, put it in there. So the first thing we need to do is just design our projectile. So let's draw a kind of type of arrow and a rocket. So excuse my art skills and we'll maybe do a little bit of fire coming out the back and now we're going to set the velocity of it so how fast it's going to move on the x-axis so move to the right so we'll set that to 100 and how fast it's going to move down on the y-axis so we want to just we want the projectile just to keep on going straight to the right. So we're going to set the velocity downwards zero. So let's try this now. Let's refresh, click on A. And as we can see, each time you click, a projectile is created. So let's move up a little bit further. And you can see it being shooting out there. So you can imagine, you know, creating a game, creating the character, creating the map, creating, you know, different 
parts of the map that you need to jump over or you know there's consequences for going into them you can create baddie sprites that you need to shoot and when you shoot them with your projectile you might get points or destroy them or get extra health and so on there really is so many different things so many different games you can create using this make code arcade editor it really is great the last thing to say in the tutorial is that if you do have one of the one of the game pads the actual physical game pads you can download your project so you give your project a name and then click on download it'll ask you what hardware you're going to download it onto so select your whatever the hardware is because it'll format it so that it works on that piece of hardware so just give it a minute there we go so that's actually downloading a file onto my computer you can go in and find that file in your downloads folder you just need to connect your your gamepad onto your computer using a usb cable and then you'll just be able to drag and drop the file the downloaded file from your computer onto your gamepad and it'll just your game that you've designed here will load up and you can actually use it for real so it really is a lot of fun I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to get our weekly coding projects, make sure to click on subscribe. And if you have any suggestions on what you'd like to see us make next, just comment in the video below.